Let's start with the filmmakers. Leo Bern, yes, Riez, me. Art Direction, Marco, Pri. Oh. Comédien, évidemment, Damien Monard. Évidemment, je sais pas. Of course. <laughs> the great actor. And, of course, voilà, Yoko Higashi. <laughs> Let's go for, again, thanks, Salut Morisset, merci, Connor Class, merci, London Fair, Flair, PR, for letting us do this. Thank you to the, the and writers of this amazing short film. I have to say, I was blown away by it. Totally blown away. I'm like, holy shit, this is next level material. And you completely delivered. I have so many questions. I don't know where to start. <laughs> so just really fast. How did this happen? So basically, uh, we come from, like Raphael and I come from a, a collective uh, in France called Mega Force. We are four directors, but we uh, we make pairs to uh, to do music videos and uh, and commercials, and so we wanted to uh, to do a step into the fiction world. So we started to look for short stories to adapt into a short film, and uh, so we found uh, this uh, this short story from this uh, Japanese writer called uh, Yasutaka Tsutsui. So basically, we found this guy because he's quite famous for writing the book that made a, a famous anime called Paprika. And it's an anime that we really like because uh, it's treating some uh, themes that we like. It's quite surrealistic. There is a lot of uh, special effects uh, and all that. And so we like the universe. So, so we went deeper into the universe of this guy and we found this, uh, this book called uh, The Sensor of Dreams. And there are a lot of short stories in it. And the first one is Sensor of Dreams. And it's uh, like a few pages, um, quite uh, very, pretty short little stories. At, the, at first, we, we thought it, it wouldn't be a, a good short film, uh, to be honest. We, we were quite uh, like not so sure. Yes, but but as, as the idea uh, kept on running into our head, well, well, we, we, we give it a try and we started to, uh, to write an adaptation of it. And we, we found uh, a way to make it... Uh, visual uh, and like yeah. more like cinema like somehow yeah because you know the um, purpose of an adaptation is trying to make something written visually so sometimes a good idea with words is not so good we, i mean on picture so we brainstorm together to find ways to make it more interesting in our point of view uh, and uh, to connect a bit more with your our universe too how do you work like building, making this short film. What's the relationship, the relationship between you two? Actually, you know, we, as, we, as Leo said, you know, we work in a collective, so we have this habit to, to brainstorm together. Okay. Only four of us, but here it was, yeah, two of us. <laughs> we have this habit yet to shoot uh, two by two. Pretty simple, you know, we are doing like some ping-pongs with ideas. So we read the text, we question something that we maybe like less, let's say. And we talk and we, yeah, we exchange ideas and until we find something that often it's something that we can see a smile on the other person or like a, a laugh, something like that. You can see that, yes, yeah, so there is maybe something uh, we found. And uh, this, yeah, it's like uh, an exchange, a brainstorm, a ping pong, yeah. If you look at the, the final object that you have, the final film versus what you had in mind, are you like amazed at what you've been capable of doing? Or you knew all along? It's hard for French people to say the word uh, amazing. So most of the time, we use pas mal. Right. Not you bad. It's not bad. Not bad. No. So it's not <laughs> It's okay. It's fine. And how do you bring in Marco in the project? Well, uh, we had no other choice. Like uh, all, all the other art directors <laughs> were like not available. So we had to go with Marco. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and Marco, did you know what you were getting yourself into? I've worked with the guys for a few jobs before this. So we've collaborated on, on commercials that I work for them. They brainstormed beforehand. So they've kind of worked out everything. So my job is easier than working with a lot of other directors because they know what the whole world is already that, that they're going to create. And then it's just a matter of making that real. Yeah. And would you say you working in more in publicity and commercials and all that stuff where you need to work fast? Yeah. Coming back to like the short film format of making short a film you there's a certain necessity to doing short films isn't it that's different than commercials in that yeah you don't have that much time you don't have that much money so i guess that kind of helps you know in being able to make those real 
I think, you know, I think that necessity is kind of, you know, what leads to creativity, I think, sometimes as well, doesn't it? In that, you know, you're in this one location, in this one place, and you have to make that work. So you have a look, you know, you go and recce and you see the location, and then you creatively work out how you can change, you know, things to, to suit the script. Perfect. So may maybe something yeah. we, we yeah. can say about, yeah. uh, about Yoko and uh, how it affects uh, actually the actual script is basically in the ending of the film, there was like a sort of revelation, like a big, a big reveal. And this reveal, we were planned to do like a, a big um, monologue from the, the character that Yoko is playing. And so this big monologue, uh, we tried, like we did in casting, we, we did like, uh, we, we tried a lot of uh, really talented actresses, but somehow we felt like maybe that's not the right way of doing it. And then uh, when I met Yoko during the, this show she, uh, she was doing it at, uh, at the museum in Paris, she was, uh, elle dégagée quelque chose, I don't know how to say, like, she was uh, expressing something uh, with her body that was like really interesting. We suggest her to, uh, to try yeah. uh, to, to go in the casting uh, together. So we started uh, with a few lines, like we, yeah. we shortened the, uh, the monologue and shortened and shortened. In the end, it was like three words. And in the end, like we, uh, we were like, maybe you should not talk at all. And we, yeah. we explain everything visually. With a with a bag a flashback or something like that. So. Yeah, so there is a flashback, and we replace the text by this. Uh, there is a special effect here when you walk your coat toward uh, Damien. We put this kind of uh, a slope. So I mean, it's it's more technical because uh, we put a slope. So when she was walking toward Damien, she was getting bigger and bigger. So actually, it was expressing it was a metaphor of her guilt. Let's say you know, like the the, the the pain she had, and so it's something we we add visually. Even we help a movement to be to be even more like fantastic thanks to that. And so we, yeah, as Leo said, we don't feel it was necessary to have any dialogue on that. Yeah. Congrats! It's you. You did an amazing achievement. It's everything that Damien just said. It's it's the beauty of cinema, and you just did it one hundred percent. It Thank actually you. feels good to watch films like that. It gives me hope. I think it, not only me, I think it gives hope to yeah. other people. Yeah, because it gives it give some dreams and some liberty and some... And it's Filmmakers, Leo, Raf, five days shooting. Yeah. yeah. Five okay. days, yeah. How did you find that amazing locale, yeah. that yeah. building? The staircase yeah. is insane. It's, you look at it and it's cinema. How did you find it? <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, so <laughs> we... Uh, Uh, so obviously, you know, at the, it's a short film. The budget was not like huge. Yeah. So we quickly, we decide, yeah, we had to, we knew that we had to find something outside of France. So we, we had a, a, a scout, uh, scout uh, manager start to send pictures from different countries of different. So we were look, trying to find like a, like a special place that looks like a bit surreal, a bit out of time. And so we received things from different countries and definitely we felt in love with this one. And actually it was in Kiev. It's a big library in the center of the city. And we especially fell in love with the main room that they, uh, and the ceiling of it made of this bubble. It's mm -hmm. like you can see sometimes we have like some low angle shot when they walk so you can see it. And we use it too for the moment when they are uh, is having his cigarette uh, yeah. on the rooftop. It's basically properly over this room uh, where we shot the, yes. the, the where the uses swimming pool appears and everything so it's like uh, yeah it's uh, it's a big um, it's a big expression with a lot of you say this in it's still in its juice you know it's coming it's coming from the 60s you don't know actually from which time it's coming you know so it was a good base and after thanks to marco We could uh, upgrade it and made it like totally like in shape with our, our ideas. So he designed the, the, the office, bring all these papers, the old paper where people sleep over on, on the on the floor because it's a metaphor of the depression of the of, of Yoko. So uh, so we yeah we put another an extra level over that to make it even like more accurate to our idea. Yeah. I have a question. Is, is this interview uh, supposed to be uh, seen by people who have seen the film or like, <laughs> who haven't seen it? <laughs> half and half. Yeah, half and half. Okay. <laughs> half and half. So a little bit of texture, uh, like uh, yeah. contextualization about the, the story. You know, so basically, in a nutshell, 
Uh, it's a um, representation about a Freudian theory called the sensor of dream. And uh, Freud believes that uh, the process of denial that we have uh, during uh, our life uh, every day, like things we don't want to hear about, the things we don't want to know, it's also happened during our dreams. And basically all the memories and all the information that comes from the subconscious and from the memories and that arrives uh, into the dream, there is like a sort of sensor who is, uh, who is in charge to, um, to transform them if those thoughts are painful, basically. And so we wanted to treat it into uh, like a really a tangible way, into like uh, a place that uh, looks real somehow, like uh, a real administration. And we had a, a reference of a, a movie uh, from uh, Kore Eda, Hirokazu Kore Eda, the Japanese uh, director, who did that. His uh, second feature film is called uh, Afterlife and is happening uh, after the death of people. And it's happening also in sort of administration uh, and that uh, it was shot in an you know, old school. And so we, we like this, this feeling. So we had to found this place. And that's why we, yeah. uh, we found this place in, uh, in yeah, Ukraine. Yeah. And it was like, it, it had a lot of potential because uh, there are some corridors, like some office and this big room that was uh, really perfect. And also something uh, that we can uh, thanks Marco is, uh, so we had a, a final scene happening like with Yoko basically meeting uh, the, the sensor. We had to, to do it in a, in a room basically. And there was this huge hole into this uh, library, but when you arrive there, you, you, you cannot really imagine it, it could yeah. be uh, the perfect place to shoot it somehow. It, it's beautiful, but uh, as it's not a room, it didn't come to our mind that we could shoot actually this space there. But Marco has uh, this vision of, um, but yeah, we, we, can, we can make it here. Like it looks great. We can, uh, there is a way to, to make it as it's a huge room uh, and it's almost like a cathedral. Yeah. And, uh, and somehow, yeah, it, it worked pretty well. Yeah? yeah, that room had a huge stained glass window, like an eye kind of yeah. time. well that looked amazing yeah. i think when i was thinking about it you know that the space was in this incredible space with huge big rooms in it and i think when i was thinking about how we dress it and things i was sort of going back to more sort of 90s installation art and how you know we didn't have the budget to do the entire room so we actually just emptied out rooms just made them completely empty and then did one thing in them so it's like almost like a sculpture like in the space how was it marco to get given this gift of that place in kiev yeah, I mean, it's, it's was it a nightmare it was, or fun? No, it was amazing. I mean, you know, the crew that we we're working with, it's like everyone's, it's a Soviet 1960s Soviet era library and everyone's birth and death is registered there. So in that corridor that you see the characters walk through and there's hundreds of these sort of filing cabinets that, you know, in there was all our local crew. They were all actually registered there. You know, it was this amazing place and each one was like a gift. You know, the staircase that they go up with all those sculptures. Wow. You know, I, I didn't do anything. That was that was just there. And just for the record, like there are, there are like some, uh, there is a, 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 some corridors that I recognize in the, in the show, uh, the TV show Chernobyl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so some of the, the places have been shot as well there. Amazing. It's pretty famous in Kiev. I mean, you are, yes, famous place, yeah. Maybe and if, when you, when you are an um, actor and, and one, in a movie, the, the, uh, the la decoration, the, the, the sets, sets is very important. But I sometimes some uh, decorator um, put something on the floor and the camera didn't uh, show yeah. that. But for for you when you play, it's very important. You you can feel the things and 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 this yeah. place is incredible because. All the, yeah. uh, the doors, the doors yeah. they are full of knots about everything in the world. And, and it's when you have to play at this kind of place and it's, it's gives something to you for, because it's yeah. like, real. it's like completely real and it's crazy. Yeah. And this, this place. Yeah, it's incredible. So what he said basically is that he would never be able to shoot on a green screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, but it's true that uh, it helps like, to, to be in this yeah, location. Like, to, yeah. but the vibe is incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah, this yeah. Yeah. What was your biggest challenge on the shoot? I don't know. If, I don't know if it... I think it was, like I said before, the location was so incredible. It just so, sort of just kept giving all the time. And then we also went to a house and we did the exterior scenes there and the swimming pool scenes. That was funny because it was like a sort of disused, rancid old swimming pool with green sludge all on the bottom. And then we built, so we then wallpapered the whole swimming pool with this crazy 1950s kind of wallpaper. So yeah, it's more, it's more, it was fun. It was good. 
I don't think there was really challenges in that respect because it's, you know, going and shooting in Kiev, it's just an incredible place. It's an incredible starting point. So it's going to, it's good memories? Yeah, that was yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, the shooting of the film was pretty amazing, I think. The film speaks for itself. And like uh, Leo was asking, uh, have, has the, the journalist seen the film? I think most have seen it, and those who have not will obviously get a link very, very soon in a few seconds or something. Mm. So don't panic. Yeah. Damien, yes. yes. just before we go on to the questions from the journalists, quick question. An actor of your caliber, of your reputation, you've got this filmography, you, sh you move from short films to feature all the time, yeah. pretty much. You do like a few shorts, do lots of features. How is it? Is it easy for you? I, I think you're one of those actors that in that your generation that can easily do the jump. I don't have really uh, some rules. I try maybe one or two uh, times by, um, by year mm -hmm. to go to short movie for, for some reason. I can, I can go into short movie with famous director, like the last short movie I made it's with uh, Yogos from Timos because he want to try another thing and it's different of his feature movie he want to experiment something and it's uh, it's very funny and very important when, when you when you are a director to continue to experiment and try something and you can and, the, and it's the same same thing for young director of short because the short movie I'm very interested by, uh, about short movie for two reasons. The first one is this one is because it's a, a place. Sometimes you can experience, experiment more in a short movie because it's a different economy and, and it's, a, it's a different way for, for us to raconte the mass. To tell. To tell. Thank you, guys. To tell, <laughs> to tell a story because it's a short story. It's, it's, it's different. And I I'm, I'm, I'm didn't play in, in a short movie because maybe it is a future a future movie. I, I don't care. I just, because it's a, spe a form, specific form, the short movie. It's a f short story. And well, I like this experimentation. And the second way, it's because um, the director of short movies, and many times they are a new director and it is my generation. And I didn't really know their plastic and aesthetic and cinema form. Uh, yeah. Form. And it's very exciting for me for, because when, when you work with a director, you already know, you, you, you can know, not exactly, but you can say, okay, you, you won't make this thing on this direction. I know his way. And when you work with people there, It's a, at the beginning, you, it's a, another experiment things because you, you didn't know already the final things. Yeah, for, for, for all this reason. And that's all. No? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You have no limit. You do what you want, man. Okay. No, because I can talk for a long time. All right. You want to start taking questions from the journalists? Yeah. yeah sure. All right. So you've already answered lots of them. I'll just start going down. Inspiration behind the film. So Leo would talk about Koreda, about Afterlife. We could add like, could add, you know, like Terry Gilliam for the, okay. um, from, from, especially from the movie Brazil. Yeah. Because there is a bit of this aesthetic too, this kind of administration, and even this kind of dark humor, English humor, we really like and love that we have at the beginning. So it's a bit, yeah, on the edge all the time between the drama and the comedy. There is, you know, especially the sequence with uh, Yoko, Yoko, like walking toward Damien at the very end. It's definitely refer um, a quote from the J. Horror scene from the 90s, like movies like The Ring from. Uh, Qatar. And even the very end, the last sequence, the last scene of the film, when they are, when she's in, uh, in the field with a kid, uh, in front of the mad painting, it's a reference from the beginning of the j -Roar from the 60s. It's from a movie named Kwaidan. It's by this direct, you know, Japanese director Kobayashi. And uh, I think he, God does something I can, I always forget. I think he 
I think it was like nominated or something like that at Cannes at this time. Mm. So it's like references from different countries, different inspiration. And even, you know, the beginning and um, the, the office, it was a reference from a, from a French film. The name was like Série Noire, I think. Yeah, Série, Série Noire. Noire with Patrick mm. Devers. Yeah, Patrick Devers, um, because one scene at some point with his Blier, uh, Bernard Blier, is like, he's playing his boss. He's like in a, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's working in a kind of a office that is, the office is a mess. So there is some quote from French cinema too. You know, it's not only, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But for having seen that last shot, by the way, it's perfect. Thank you. It's uh, amazing. It finishes everything. It's, I loved it. All the music, they're crazy. No, no, yeah. seriously. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. You, we, we, like choice of, we like them too. Yeah. Question so, so from the music. Some of the music, like if we are talking about music, some of the music has been done by uh, Yoko. Uh, Yoko and uh, Yoko's partner, mm. uh, whose name is uh, uh, Lionel Marchetti. <laughs> Uh, and so, yeah, like, uh, all right. So Louise Reynolds asks us, do you plan on making this a feature? Uh, the, the answer is no, uh, because we, we, are, we like this story because it has somehow, it, it works uh, as it is. And we, we don't feel we want to make it uh, bigger. Like there is, it's pretty dense. There is like a, a real beginning, a real middle, a real end. Uh, and we, we just wanted to experiment something that we, we didn't want to make a short film to uh, sell the idea of doing oh. a, a, a long format film, basically. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Each one you say, you will say we agree. So it's no. fine. It's totally okay. <laughs> okay. Question from, again, Louise Reynolds. Are there any other books that have inspired you to potentially do a film on? Yeah, no, not really. Actually, like we are both uh, working, uh, like developing our own feature film. They are um, both based on uh, just uh, original, original, original stories. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, the pen, personal thing. Mm. I gotta ask, what's this Gus Van Sant executive producer thing? I'm like, oh, it's, it's, it's quite crazy. Like, cool, uh, so we we got a chance to to show the movie to him. We just asked him, like, uh, okay, if you like it, would you like to be uh, to to support it? And actually, he loved it. Like we were like super thrilled that uh, he had like yeah. a, a good reaction to it, and uh, he immediately uh, answered and uh, yeah. and he said really nice thing about it. And so uh, yeah. you know how it is like when uh, some uh, like uh, talented guy, like famous uh, person, uh, want to support a film, then uh, is uh, credited uh, as an executive producer, and that's a way to uh, to support a film. And so that that's what he did, and like we are like. So happy because uh, we, we respect uh, what uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing I never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I just discovered that. Very happy. <laughs> yeah, he's busy. You know, okay. He's, he's really busy. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Gus. Yeah. I mean, he really loves the film, so it's like it's a good, uh, it's a good present. Uh, I mean, good support for us. Yeah. So, so, what if Gus came back to you with a lot of money and said, let's make a feature? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it has money. Uh, yeah, obviously, yes. <laughs> would be a great TV series, by the way. It could be. Mm -hmm. That yeah. could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. On the yeah, on the, the concept. Yeah. Quick question from Simon Gideon. Simon Gideon's. <clears throat> Tell us about the film's success on the film festival circuit. What to say? Like basically, yeah. uh, uh, we did. Uh, we start quite not 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 so much a long time ago. Actually, like we started oh. the tour of this short film. Uh, with the Warsaw Festival in Poland. That's where we got the Grand Prix that qualified her for the Academy Oscar. Like three months ago, no? Uh, so yeah, that was in October, basically. Yeah. So we didn't do uh, so, so many uh, festivals yet, like maybe something like uh, six. So it's just the beginning. Uh, but uh, yeah, like so far, we had like some pretty interesting, uh, good feedbacks. So yeah, it's great. Perfect. Quick question. How come the swimming pool sequences were so chaotic? Uh, because it's the is the sequence we did we had the less time to shoot basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was the very last thing we shot and uh, we were fighting against the sun because it was at night and the sun was about to rise and we had to be in the night so basically we did like one take for each shot basically like it yeah, was, yeah, for, uh, almost, yeah yeah almost yeah and we lost some time because it's my birthday this day it's <laughs> 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 turned 40 you know this, yeah. uh, this day <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big number man you have to yeah you have to take a break and do it mm -hmm. yeah. 
No, it's, uh, it was a big day, yeah, because yeah, you have a lot to shoot. I'm just on the border of the swimming pool. It's nothing with Silva. You and the, the dogs, fun, human dogs, and every people, it's crazy. And, and what you can add about the swimming pool? <laughs> You, uh, you know, you know. Obviously, we never brought a swimming pool inside this place, the administration. So, you know, the the sh shooting list was a bit sp special yeah. because we had to shoot four days in this administration, where many things happen. Mm -hmm. But everything that was happening outside in the memories when they visit the memories, mm -hmm. and in the swimming pool was happening in this house. It that happened. It was. It was a bit chaotic too because everything was condensed in yeah. one day and one night to do everything, and even the field too. <laughs> the, for the very end uh, shot. <laughs> Actually, it was really, really difficult and involving because, you know, sometimes, you know, when you sh were shooting uh, some dream part in the swimming pool, it was easier because there was no problem of continuity. But when we were shooting, guys, you know, work, working inside the swimming pool that, that was still supposed to be yeah. in the administration, we had to light it in a different way and mimic, you know, the, to replicate a bit the carpet we had in the administration in the garden around to give the feeling we are still there, you know, in the other place. So mm -hmm. in terms of continuity, lighting wise, <laughs> reward and everything, it was really, really, really hard, you know, to not miss and forget something. Mm -hmm. You know, like be sure the story makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did a great job. We truly believed there's a swimming pool. Yeah. In that shot. Mm -hmm. It's insane. It's really, 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 really great film achievement. Last question. What would an Oscar nomination mean to you all? Uh, Champagne. <laughs> yeah, champagne. <laughs> cool. On these, on these two words, I think we're going to end it. Ça serait cool. Ça serait cool. <laughs> Again, congrats on making an absolutely incredible piece of cinema. Thank yeah. you. All of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's you insane. Thank when I saw it, I still think it's one of the best things I've seen this year. And you give us hope in cinema and everything else. It's uh, everything we need right now. Yeah. So, Super. yeah. Uh, sure. And now getting to know all of you behind the scenes make makes this film even better. Cool. So enjoy the ride. Hopefully, we'll our paths will cross someday. Leon, Yoko, <laughs> oui. Paris, and all that stuff, <laughs> and I'll go back shoveling snow. We'll see each other <laughs> on the other side. So thanks again. <laughs>